Sounds like fuel's returning to the tank. Let's give her a bump. guys welcome back to the channel welcome back to the garage so tonight and actually last night and i think i did a little bit the night before anyway we've been working on the bobcat 61 inch zero turn which i am happy to say i am happy with other than changing out a couple bolts on the deck for something a little longer so i can get a lock nut on them uh the ones down here that actually hold the deck uh just need a little longer bolt other than that the, the project is done all the belts are on the deck is complete um new new blades we're just good to go um i mowed with it i actually did a little mowing last night when i got everything together just to make sure it worked and then the plan was to come right home from work grease it which i did and then mow so when i decided to mow i figured hey um i want to drain one tank both tanks are very empty so i just wanted to run the one out of fuel and just fill the other just have one tank with fuel in it for now. And I did that. I filled up this right side with all the controls on it. And we ran this one out of fuel. Then I couldn't get the thing started. Um, when I swapped tanks, it just wouldn't turn over, wouldn't start. And I figured out oh, it's out of fuel. You know, it's just having a hard time drawing it. Pulled the line off the um, little pump, fuel pump. Couldn't get no fuel out. So then I got messing with it, and here there's a little valve on there, um, a shutoff valve on the fuel tank. Long story short, it has a screen on it, and that was all clogged up. But when I pulled that out, it pulled the little grommet out on the fuel tank, which is why you see this duct tape on here. Um, need to get a new grommet for that in order to use that valve and use this tank. But I was able to get that fuel out of there and into the left tank here which works and it does hold like five gallons of fuel so i don't even know if i'm going to fix the other side i have this you know everything but that grommet in order to do so needless to say the thing runs it cuts like a boss it is fast the only problem is it's a little aggressive and uh turning wise you know it just wants to spin a lot which not a big deal um just kind of got to learn how to drive this more industrial machine it definitely is uh a little more aggressive than my father's X Martin, certainly more than my uh, little 18 horse grasshopper. But yeah, it, it, it but it'll cut some grass, boy. Woo, man. Uh, but yeah, I'm very happy with how it's turned out so far. But if you guys don't remember, we took the 27 horse that was on it and put a 25 on it because the 27 blew up. We needed a shaft sleeve. We got new blades. Um, yeah, a bunch of miscellaneous stuff. We had to do some custom work back here with the scaffolding and the muffler. But needless to say, this project is done. Um, like I said, very happy with it. It's, it's just got to get used to driving the thing. So, back to the race truck and back to this kind of stuff. Um, first things first, we will be putting the tailpipe back on Caitlin. Um, in the last episode, we just straight piped her, took the resonator out. 
as much as I do like the noise, the there's a bit of a drone and it is kind of annoying with the windows down. Windows up, not a big deal, but summertime, unless it's ungodly hot, I'm driving around with the windows down. So we're gonna put the tailpipe on to see if that uh, resolves anything so that the, you know, the exhaust isn't just echoing underneath of the bed. So we'll get the tailpipe on there and just shoot it off to the side. I actually have a tip downstairs, so we'll throw the five to six inch tip on there as well. And we'll just see if that makes a difference, if it makes it sound better, you know, to me. Like I said, I like the noise. It's a lot louder and it sounds good, but it's just that drone, drone-ish sound, I guess you'd say. Anyway, I'm rambling, I know. I just, that fuel thing kind of irritated me there for a minute because it was stuck out in the yard. And anyhow, we'll get that on there. If I don't like it, the resonator will be going back on. So on to the race truck. Um, I'm doing a lot of switching around with the camera. I don't know why, like I said. Uh, anyway, John got a hold of me from all dunes. They have our torque converter, our custom setup, which we'll go over when we get it. And the transmission's ready to go, unfortunately, between his schedule and my schedule. Not going to be able to make it down there this week in order to get that. So we're going to have to wait until next week, hopefully Monday or Tuesday, to get that from him. But uh, I'm excited. We got a new flex plate, tour converter, transmission's ready to go. Yes. So, that being said, we need to wait for the transmission to do our cross member and our drive shaft hoop and all that but we can work on our fuel cell so we're going to put our rollover valve in right here my idea with putting it in right here is we will either come up with a straight piece of pipe or just come over to our bedside with a hose probably with the with the hose off to the side of the bed is my plan which means i think this center part's going to have to come apart so i can get my hand in there to catch any chips from drilling that hole so we put a rollover valve in and then we're going to try and start the truck it hasn't had fuel in a while we ran all new returns and feeds so we're going to try and start it and see what happens there see if we get you know any warning lights or anything because it has been a while since we started it you know with our our half dash mod and all our fuel lines and all that kind of good jazz <sighs> so i'm done talking i'm gonna throw this tailpipe on there we're gonna to get to putting this rollover valve in. The sound's probably not gonna change, but here's the before anyhow. And here's the after. All right, so we have our full five inch uh, turbo back exhaust on. Well, it's four inch down pipe to a five inch straight exhaust. So we'll see if that gets through the drone. I don't know if it will or not. Um, to me, it doesn't sound any different yet, but driving, it might not echo under the bed. So yeah, uh, let's get this fuel cell. So the rollover valve is installed. I just measured. I actually need should take something to clean up that marker mark, but oh well. Um, but it's installed. Basically, it's a 7 8 hole. I just use what uh, I call a unibit. I believe that's what they're called. But basically, it's a step bit with little increments like quarter or half, 5 8 3 quarter, 7 8 So you can get a perfect size hole. This happened to be 7 8 so that's what we used. Then just installed our gaskets, installed it. Uh, inch and a quarter wrench on top, inch and an eighth on the bottom. Um, here's the inside of our fuel cell, which you can see there's our level sensor, there's our foam, um, really not much to say. Um, also, I used this spray paint can top when I was drilling to avoid getting uh, chips in the tank. Uh, the first, first couple of steps on the bit, I used this big square one, which was nice because I couldn't tell where I was at it to start off with. But... It wouldn't fit straight out of the hole, so I had to just kind of, you know, contort it. 
the spray paint can obviously is a much better choice if you're going to do this um so the lid for this thing is basically like the old uh fuel fuel tank sumps so you just have a little collar here and the backing plate here for the bottom which just you know splits and then it'll go in like that now this is plastic uh which i'm certainly not really thrilled about um actually it's got metal inserts in it so i take that back we'll see how this is but these were very loosely in there i just had my little stubby ratchet that i use to take them out so i'm going to try to make sure i don't over torque them uh if we have a little leak we can always go back and try and tighten them up and even rtv them if we have to but we're just going to be try and be gentle and put this back in how it was so i'll do that i'll reinstall it i will look over everything i will put the battery in and maybe we'll try and start this thing all right we have nothing contacting the flex plate the battery is in i have the wires for our 68 rfe which we still have to uh wire in with a relay at some point but i have those going right to the neutral so the truck should read in neutral and start um there is no coolant in it um i'll get this stuff off of here but the only other thing is i put this fitting right here in our rail relief valve um port just to make sure no fuel comes out of that i really need to find a block off of some sort but no fuel should come out of that because we have a race plug rather than a relief valve but i put that in there just to double check and make sure um but we will put, put some diesel fuel in the tank and bump it a few times just to get the air dog prime we'll check our lines make sure we don't have any leaks and then we'll try and start it and uh We'll see what we got like i said there's no coolant in it we're not gonna run it for long we'll just get her fired up and uh yeah see that our fuel system's good got a little layer of diesel in there so we should be good to go let's uh find this air dog a couple times see what we got all right Where's the key? There it is. Well, the air dog kicks on. That's a good sign. You know what? Let me take this cap off. Sounds like fuel's returning to the tank. Let's give her a bump. Hey! Air dog coming! Starts up! No fuel coming out of our uh, relief valve port. Good deal! Man, she fired right up a lot quicker than I expected. I don't see any leaks. We got fuel trickling in from our air dog return. We got fuel, fuel coming in from our return from our um, Engine compartment. Good deal. Fantastic. For once, drama free.
fitting in the back of the head's not leaking. Man, good deal. Good deal. All right. Sweet. Well, guys, I am ecstatic. Uh, the truck started right up a lot quicker than I ever anticipated. Uh, we got fuel returning to the tank. We got fuel returning from the air dog to the tank. Um, fuel's obviously being supplied to the engine. Um, just drama free. I mean, that was, you saw it. That was the first time I tried to start it and it started right up. Um, we just primed the air dog a couple times. Um, I'm ecstatic. Uh, yeah, for once, just drama free. You yeah, know, not, nothing exciting. It just did what it was supposed to. Um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, ex I'm thrilled. Um, I'm very happy. Um, we still do have to bolt down our air dog and our fuel cell permanently, but we will get to that. Um, we really need to get our cross member and transmission and all that stuff in, but dude, the, the thing just started right up. Um, we got a bunch of other stuff to do, a bunch of little stuff, but nothing major other than that cross member getting the trans in. So we're going to end right there, guys. I hope you liked the video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. I'll catch you guys in the next one, and we're going to be getting to the track soon. By the end of August, we're going to be at the track. I'm, I'm telling you now. So I'm just thrilled. All right, guys, get out there and get to it.